Alright guys, this is going to be a little recording using Premiere Pro, how I edit my art videos and some of my other YouTube videos like on North, South, East, West. Um, so I use Premiere Pro 2021. So the things I show may be placed differently or may not exist potentially depending on the version you own, whether that be past or maybe a future one if you're looking at this way in, ad in advance. Um, but as a recording, this is the newest version that is out, I believe. Don't think I've heard anything about 2022. So we're going to open this. And sometimes it takes a second for it to open on my computer because I kind of have a lot on my computer. So move this up. So here's different previous trips. So like if you have something you've been working on, you can just click on this and it should auto import, reset up show everything as you had it before unless you've moved your files which we'll talk more about when we get more into this so for now we're gonna do new project I'm gonna name it the same as the last one because the last one was supposed to be this recording but I messed up the visuals so same just gonna leave this basically how it automatically decides it's gonna do it I haven't really had any issues with it being at these settings so like there's, there's a few other options in here if you wanted to swatch, not swatch, switch different things. But what I have is, that's, that's what I needed at. So hit OK. Oh wait, sorry. But let me add two. Okay, now OK. Now it should open up a whole new screen. So this is what you start with when you first open it. This is going to be where all your imported media is, so your videos, your audio, uh, images maybe that you might want to put into the video. They'll show up in here when you import those, which we'll do in a moment. This is going to be your timeline zone, so when I start bringing the videos in and I start stitching together the video, that'll all show up here. This is going to be the preview for the video, so you'll be able to watch the playthrough. It'll tell you how long it is. There's the different play, back, forward, all that different stuff. This is the effects control area. You can also change the amount of space each of these sections take up. So maybe you want to, you're want you trying to do a lot of editing here, so you push it up so you can see better all your different like timeline stuff that you've got going on. Bring this back down. Or if you're doing a lot of editing, like effects, you can just push this over so you can see more of the timeline that'll show up for that here but for now let's go ahead and just import the video I'm going to use for this example so unfortunately this video is three parts I was hoping that I could show one where it was all just a single video length but the last one I had that was like that is already edited and ready to be uploaded so we're just gonna have to use this one as the example for now which you know long time coming for this to be uploaded. It was recorded a long time ago. So we'll import those. So now these showed up here. I can tell you just from looking at this, they're out of order. This should be the last part, so I want this over here. So if you click this little icon here and click that, and if you usually select by name, it should sort by order if you just have it by like date and time you recorded it. So this should be the first clip, that's the second clip, and then that's gonna be the end. So I'm going to drag, you click and hold to drag this on here. And that creates your timeline. So you see a bunch of new stuff just popped up. So like I was saying before, timeline, here's your little time code for how long it is. Right now it's saying exactly how long this particular clip on the timeline is. So it's saying my video total length is 27 seconds, which it is if you scan through here. Um, there's all the imported files. So if you look over here, this has now joined the imported files that I had and this is basically your timeline file so this is going to be the entire compilation of everything you put on here um, and then it also tells you which clips you have put on here so if you look at these down here that I haven't added it says this this is all grayed out and that's basically because I haven't put it over there if you go up here this is blue and it says video used one time it's letting me know that this is already on my timeline so I don't hopefully grab it twice. Uh, not much of an issue when you have only three clips, but some of my next video that I show will 
We'll show how that could get kind of confusing because unfortunately GoPros record in shorter bursts in terms of file size. But anyway, so these videos were recorded just using OBS, recording my, my Cintiq screen while I was drawing. So we're going to go ahead and add this one. And then you can use this bar down here to basically expand your timeline so you can see your entire video or if say you want to just zoom in on this part here you can zoom it in that small and zoom back out and we're going to add this last clip right there so when you're putting those clips on there you can if you if I grab this one and do this and you do that you go oh no I've accidentally overlaid it on top of you know this video file that was already here you pull it back it's still missing. So if you pull this, you can actually bring that part that you accidentally cut off back. So it's not a total loss, so don't panic if you accidentally do that. You can bring it back, or worst case scenario, you could just delete this and re-import that section again. So now, another thing to note is if you look here, you notice this big yellow bar appeared when I imported these timelines. That's basically letting me know that none of this is rendered. So when I play it, it actually may not play smoothly. Um, not sure. This isn't the longest of videos and not really the most complex or large of files, so it may play fine this time, but some of the bigger files it kind of gets a little questionable on. So if you hit play, just gotta think about it. There it goes. So you can see that's it playing in real time. You can see what's uh, going on there. You can see it's kind of fuzzed out too because it's not really, it's a lot of video. It's not really, like I promise I didn't record it in that crappy quality. So it needs to be rendered for it to play better. So what we're going to do is you're going to go to sequence, which is going to be up at the top. Then you're going to go to render into out. And what it's going to do is now it's going to render all those files. So it's telling me, it's rendering one of my three video previews, which I've added three clips, so it's talking about each clip. So right now it's rendering this first one, well it was rendering the first one, it's already done, it was only 27 seconds. So now it's going to render the second and third. Um, this is probably going to take a little bit of time, so, well, f for me, so for you this is just going to be sped up, so, you know, we'll explain more of what's going on when it's finished rendering these out. Okay, so. so it's finished rendering now, so that entire bar up here is turned green, letting me know that all of these clips that I have up here are now fully rendered and they should play back perfectly fine. Let me pick right here. So you can see it is playing back okay. So we're going to zoom this back up. So you can see right now my entire video time is almost two hours long, which I definitely don't want. Um, I find my longer videos just tend not to do as well on YouTube and stuff like that, so I try to shorten them typically between two and five minutes, but we're going to aim for like six minutes with this one. I think there's enough happening that six minutes will be fine. So to do that, you can either do it by individually adjusting each of these. So like, if you, I've clicked on this one, you right click, scroll down, and right here it says speed duration, and click on that, and you can change the percentage, or you can click and drag this time frame here for how much, how much time this little clip takes. Um, so you would just click that, changes it, 
So we're going to cancel that since I'm going to do it all at the same time. So to do that I'm going to click and drag and it selects all three. I'm going to go to the same thing and speed duration and it may take a little bit of playing around with to figure out exactly how much time or how much percentage you need to change it, how much time you, you feel like is good for it. Um, so for this particular time, I'm going to speed it up 2,000%, which sounds like a lot, but when you actually do it, it should be. So the downside of doing it like that is, as you can see, it's super spaced out. Like it says it's only 57 minutes right now, which is obviously not what I want, but that's literally because it is measuring to where this last clip is sitting. So if I, for example, zoom out and I decide just want to click this and drag it over here it now says the video time is an hour and eight minutes because it counts all of this blank time in between as video time even though there's no there's no clip there so you're gonna to want to click and drag it over here and so the other important thing is you see that I keep moving this little I'm not really sure what to call it just call it a little pointer I guess um, I keep moving that around because when I go to do this you see it, it basically zooms in essentially to where you, wherever you have that. And so there's this really teeny clip over here that was 27, 27 seconds long when we started, is only now one second and 20 something seconds. Um, I need to move this to connect to that, and then zoom back out, and then I grab this, connect it to this. So now those are all together, and the length of my time is five minutes and 57 seconds. So now that I've made that change though, you can see that this is all yellow again. It's letting me know that those changes have not been rendered. It may not play back very smoothly. Um, you can export it like that. I don't think it really affects it. It hasn't for me personally, um, but I like to be, I like to see how it looks beforehand and make sure I'm seeing really what it's honestly gonna look like. And it also can make it kind of funky if you're trying to time stuff to sound because it can make it go off a little bit. So for my sanity, I'm going to have it render into out again. Um, this one, I don't, it shouldn't take quite as long, but it will still be a little bit of time. Um, so again, you're gonna see this sped up, so it's really not gonna be any time for you, but for me, I'll probably be waiting like 10, 15 minutes again, maybe, maybe a little bit less, we'll see. Alright, so now it's finished rendering the changes I made, so you can see, because I showed the sketch part a little bit earlier, how much faster it's zipping through that. So that's, that should be, I think it's fast enough. We'll say it's fast enough. So one of the other things I do want to do, I don't like when my videos, when they go, so when I get to the end, I'm going to add a full version of this image here so that you can actually see it in full screen and see what it looks like without it being twisted and turned and drawn all over. Um, but I don't like going from like a moving shot to like a, a super still cut. So what I'm going to do to kind of ease it a little bit better, so I'm going to make this screen a little bit bigger, because now I'm going to pop over here in this effects area. So you can see some of the different things you can do. If you've ever used Photoshop, <coughs> they're really not that different. So there's like scale, rotation, position is quite literally just moving this around. They're on different um, axes though. So I'll show that in a second. Um, then you have opacity, speed, and then for if you have a clip, so like it thinks that I have some audio recorded here, I don't. Um, you can see that if you zoom in, it's just a flat line. It's because there's no audio there. Um, but if, for example, you did have audio there and you didn't want it playing, um, you want to put different audio, if you look here, it's got a couple options, and this is to mute it, so you hit mute, and if there was audio, it would mute it and it won't be a concern for you if you have a different audio and you just put the new audio on this other audio line down here, and that will play. Alright, so next thing I want to do is I want to add that little that sort of fade out now since I don't want it to cut from you know 
this super speedy moving image to a still image because it can be a little jarring. So I'm going to find... Do it from about right there. So we're going to close that. We're going to open up opacity. We're going to hit the toggle animation that puts a keyframe there. We're going to make this smaller. Or, well, make the scroll bar smaller, but make the timeline a little bit bigger so that I can see more what's going on. We're going to click here, and I'm going to drag it down to zero. So now it needs to be rendered, so sequence, render into out, and that may take a minute. Not super long, though, because it's not a huge change to a ton of frames. All right, and it's finished rendering that now, so we're gonna pause that. We're gonna jump ahead here. We're gonna, oh, nope, we are not gonna spotlight search. We are gonna jump ahead here. And we're going to play it. It'll take a second for it to get to that particular point, but as soon as we start seeing sort of the snow kind of bits being blocked in, it should start slipping into, there we go. So it should start to fade. And there you can see it's fully fading out, and now it's black and now the clip is ended. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab probably just a screenshot. I don't think I have that particular file on my computer right this second. So I'm going to take a screenshot. I'm going to place it directly after that clip and that's going to basically be my finished version. Here's what it looks like and it's going to start from 0% opacity and go to 100% opacity so it's a nice clean fade in, fade out, well, fade out, fade in in this case. Um, and then from there that's going to cut to the thank you screen, like thank you for watching. I'm also going to add a little intro image at the beginning and we're going to get some, some, uh, some music on here so that it's not just, you know, creepy silence while you're watching a drawing video. So let's get started on that next. Alright, so the next step is going to be the outro card, the finished art, and then the music. Um, so I mentioned earlier I was going to put an intro card, but we actually are not going to do that for this particular video. Because I forgot this isn't going on my channel, this is going on the Dakota's ARPG channel. So it's not- the, the intro card is literally me, so not really relevant to the channel in this case. So we're going to go ahead and go up here to file, we're going to hit import. I put everything into this little folder, so we're going to grab all of these and import. So we're going to bring the art in first, and just drop that right there at the tail end of the video. We're going to shrink this and we're going to come over here. And you can see the art is obviously much... Uh, it imported much larger than the actual frame of the video, so we're going to go back to the beginning and we're going to go over here to scale. And we're going to basically zoom out until it fits the best it can, so in this case about there. We're going to mark that as a, as a keyframe and go across here and now it's staying at the right size. So we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and do render into out so that it's a little bit faster when I do the next part. Okay, so it's done now. So we're going to go back to the art. So the first thing we're going to do is add the effect I talked about where it's going to start at 0% opacity and become 100% opacity. So go ahead and drop it all the way down to zero. We're going to do this. So this clip is kind of short right now, but we are probably going to adjust it anyway. Let's put a keyframe there for 0% opacity at the beginning. We'll put like right there for the time being for 100%. We're going to render it again again and see if that fades in too fast or not fast enough. 
this. Let's see. I think that's fine. So we are going to extend it just a little bit longer because it's not a very long time to really look at it. Um, so you, and you want people to be able to at least see kind of the end result because I personally flip the canvas too much. So people probably are not seeing as much as they could be. So we'll extend it to about there. Gonna render those new parts out. Pause it again. We're going to play through just this tail end again. So it's going to hold there. Okay, and then we're going to add the outro video now. Not the outro video, the outro image. I'm going to zoom in. All right. And again, too big so we're gonna go ahead and fix the scale before we render it about oh wait we may not use this outro image because it's still me yeah we'll take out the outro image we just won't have an outro for this one so cut so we'll just let it literally end on the art. Okay, so the next step now is adding the music. I get majority of my music from YouTube's little um, audio library that they have. Unfortunately, a lot of the stuff I personally like is kind of short. So I kind of have to loop it a few times. Like you can see here, the song that I've got. And oh, by the way, I dropped it down here. So this little division line where it says A1 and all that, this is the audio stuff. V1 to V3, this is where you want to drop all your video tracks. So be mindful of that. Especially because like you could drag this down over this and it would delete that entire file. So be careful moving stuff around there. You can kind of erase your own work. So now I've got the music file there. So we're going to do a quick little test play. This one's a fairly low chill song, so it's not doing it too much, but you can see over here, this is kind of showing the volume and how, how high it's getting. Yellow's okay, but it's, uh, when it gets to some of these parts down here, it is, it's even doing it now. It's going to start hitting the red areas and you don't want that. That's going to start like peaking the speakers and stuff like that. And it won't sound as good. So you want to kind of keep it in this green. Cause that's where it's going to sound the best. So yeah, see there, you can see it popped up. It's a little bit too loud. Um, so what we're going to do so we're going to click this and you see the effects thing changed because I clicked on a track that is literally only the audio. There's no video attached. So we're going to push it back. So now we just have our volume controls, a channel volume control panner. Um, we're just going to be messing with volume. So we're going to go to level. I like to usually I find like around nine to ten is kind of low enough generally to keep it in the range that I want so we're gonna hit play again and see where where this lands to see if it's any better or if I need to drop it more but you can see already it's not really hitting the yellow anymore it's staying in green I do think when it gets to some of these louder parts it is gonna teeter into the yellow so I'm probably gonna push it down a little more but we'll give it a chance to to get to that to see what it does So it looks like the loudest parts hit about here. So I am going to drop it just a little bit more. It doesn't need much. So we're going to make sure we make sure you push this back to the beginning of the clip because if you change it here, it will literally scale the audio by that rather than it being that 
across the board. So make sure you go all the way back. We're going to push my audio. Try 11. See if 11 is any better. We're going to push a little bit closer to the, the louder parts. Which you can tell where some of those are. If I zoom in, you can kind of see here where it's kind of peaking a little bit more. Where some of these are a little bit lower. Okay, yeah. So now the the highest part is barely, I think, the bottom of the yellow-green. So we can work with that. So that's fine. So we're going to pause. But real quick, more on the timeline. So if you zoom in, this really emphasizes the, the difference between these two. So like this obviously has no audio whatsoever, so it's just a flat line. And this one that does have audio, you can see the different peaks and valleys of the music as it goes for like loudness and softness. Um, it's good to it's good to have if you're gonna cut to like the beat and stuff like that so you can find like hard beats if you want to cut to the harder beats or like certain like subtle sounds. Um, you can even get like you can get real close and see where all of that is. It's really good for like vlogs I'd say if you're doing AMVs probably best so so what we're gonna do now so the next problem we have is this clip is clearly not nearly as long as my video and we need it to come out to here so you could get another song and just cycle through different songs through your video and do that that way I tend to just kind of loop the same song so that it keeps the same kind of vibe I guess um, so I'm going to pull this on again, and you do have to be kind of careful doing this. Some some don't really allow this. They don't like the... It's kind of remixing a little bit. Not not much, though. So mostly all I'm doing is pushing it so that it hopefully seamlessly mixes. Mm, I don't think this one will. So we're going to zoom in a little bit more. So what I want to do... So I'm gonna, you can see there's a little bit of flat space at the beginning of that audio. I want to kind of get rid of that. Not really get rid of it, but like minimize that because I want the transition between these two to be fairly seamless. It's not gonna be perfect. I'm not a sound mixer. Uh, so I'm gonna, so I've pushed it back. We're gonna bring this over. We're gonna do a quick little test run, which now that we're like really in the music and audio checking, I do want to apologize in case my computer speakers start to pop because unfortunately there is something wrong with them and I just can't be bothered to fix it because I'm tired of computer repairs. So they might pop. It's not the song. It's my computer. It's fine. So we're gonna play this. Okay, so we're actually gonna back out one more time because that was too quick okay so that was actually a pretty pretty smooth transition so that works out so but as you can see I'm still not at the end so I need to do this one more time and line it up one more time and then that should hopefully reach the end and then we'll do a little bit of very minor audio adjustments to make it fade out so that the video ends kind of on silence and not abruptly on a on a musical note so we're gonna push this in and I'm kind of using oh goodness sometimes it gets a little tough when you're too zoomed in to figure out where in the hell you are okay so we're gonna go right here. We're gonna do a test play before I zoom in again. Okay, so that one's fine too. And now it finally reaches the end of the video. So the other thing also is these two additional versions of that song that I've added on here do not have the editing that this one has for volume yet. So we need to go in and we need to give it the same 
volume as this one so that it's as seamless as it can be. So you click, so it's at 11.1, .1, so we're going to go to this one, bring it to the beginning. I'm literally going to type 11.1, .1, hit enter. Ooh, or is it negative 11.1? Okay, negative 11.1. So it needs the the minus, or else it will blast the music. Okay. So let's do that for this one. So it's negative 11.1. .1. Enter, keyframe. So it seems good, so one thing we can do so that the video doesn't run, because the video will run even if there's, you know, no visual here because the audio just goes that far. So we do want to shrink this audio track so that it is the same length. It'll snap to the end of where this is, so you don't have to be super tedious about lining it up. So now that's the same, so the video will end here no matter what. So now the last thing I want to do with this video is I want to about right here add another keyframe, which this way you just do by that and it adds another keyframe of exactly the same level. Then I'm going to push this to the end of the video and I'm going to open this again and I'm going to send it all the way down and that basically mutes the music. So now it should when it plays go from its normal volume to nothing. So we're going to go ahead and let it play to see if it worked. And it did. So that's basically the end of the editing for that video. It's nothing super complicated. Um, the art ones tend to be my more simplified ones. So hopefully this was informative. Oh, one more thing. Uh, so you have all your files here. And all these files are tied to where I have them on my desktop. So if I move them and I open this, this Premiere file again, this will show as not knowing, not being able to identify where that file is. I can actually show an example of that. Let me save that. So let's open. Let's open this all day trip. I just removed all of the source footage for this particular one off of my desktop. So when I open it, you're going to see it's not going to be able to find. So here, so yeah, so it tells you, oh, you're missing all these clips because it, this is where it knew them to be at, which is the file path and that's how it connected them. So it, it gives you the option. You can go and kind of locate them and it'll re connect them and right now for me they're all on my external hard drive this video is already exported so it doesn't matter anymore um, so I'm not gonna reconnect it I'm just gonna hit cancel um, but this is a oh actually it's kind of funny so you can see the the text that I used for the video is still there so that's still showing up but the rest of this shows us media offline so you want to be mindful of where your your files are if you're going to like edit and then come back to it. But yeah, I uh, I hope this was helpful in some regard, especially if like Premiere looks super intimidating. Um, there's obviously a lot more tools in this that I didn't really use, but like for you can use some bare bones parts of it and get get some fairly nice videos out of it. Um, I'll cover more of some of the tools that you can use in here in my next video, which will be about how I edit the North, South, East, West videos, which is more of a vlog style thing. So there's a lot more cut editing, there's color editing, there's volume editing, there's overlapping sounds. There's, there's a lot more to those. Um, but yeah, see you guys next time.